Hey everyone, some important news has come in and we thought that you would want to hear about it. So let's join our friends at Newsround to tell us more. Sean and the gang are back for some madcap adventures. Who's your lad for up and jump for joy? Because there's lots of mischief and plenty of mayhem to go around. Don't miss all this fun with Sean the Sheep. Tomorrow at 3.45 on CBBC and iPlayer. Good afternoon. This is News Round. We have some sad news to bring you today. Queen Elizabeth II has died at the age of 96. She passed away at Balmoral Castle in Aberdeenshire. She was the UK's longest serving monarch. She spent longer on the throne than any other king or queen. She became queen in 1952. Her death marks the end of an era for our country. Ricky looks back now at her life and reign. Queen Elizabeth II spent over seven decades on the throne. During that time, lots of things changed in Britain, but one thing that never changed was her strong belief that she had a duty to serve her people. I am before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Her grandchildren, Prince William and Prince Harry, were among the many people who were impressed by her dedication to her job constantly able to go into a room and bring the room to life. When Elizabeth was born in 1926, she wasn't actually supposed to become the Queen. Her uncle, Edward, was King, and the rules meant that if he had children, they would one day succeed him. However, when Elizabeth was just 10 years old, her life changed forever. Edward gave up the throne, and her father, King George VI, took over, meaning she would be Queen when he died. As a young princess, her life was dominated by World War II. It was then that her sense of public duty first came to the surface. She helped to keep people's spirits up by broadcasting messages of hope. Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your homes and be separated from your fathers and mothers. My sister, Margaret Rose and I, feel so much for you as we know from experience what it means to be away from those we love most of all. During this time, Princess Elizabeth had also fallen in love with Philip, Prince of Greece. They married in 1947, two years after the war had ended, and huge crowds celebrated their wedding around the country. In 1952, her father died and she became queen. Being the queen involved lots of responsibilities. She wasn't just the queen of Great Britain, she was also head of a group of 54 countries, including Australia, India, Jamaica, and Canada. This group of countries is called the Commonwealth, and visiting them was a big part of her role. Another part of her job was to offer guidance to politicians here in the UK. She met with the prime minister every week to be consulted on the biggest issues of the time. Her time as Queen wasn't always easy. One of the most difficult periods in her reign came in 1997 after the death of Princess Diana, who had been married to her son Prince Charles and was the mother of Princes William and Harry. Princess Diana had been very popular and when she died there was an outpouring of sadness. Thousands of people left flowers and cards at the gates of Buckingham Palace in London. At the time, the Queen was in Scotland with Prince William and Harry. She decided the family should stay there and grieve in private, rather than making statements or going back to London where the crowds of people were. Many thought this showed that she didn't understand their feelings and that the Queen was out of touch with her people. Eventually, she spoke to the public on live TV. What I say to you now, as your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. 
It had been one of the few times in Queen Elizabeth's reign that large numbers of the public had been against her, and the experience left her shaken. However, the family recovered from this difficult time, and later in her life, there were lots of royal celebrations. One of the biggest was the wedding of Prince William to Kate Middleton, now called the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Around a million people gathered on the streets of London, and some even camped out for days to see the royal couple. A year later, there were more celebrations, this time because the Queen had reached an important milestone, her Diamond Jubilee. That meant she had spent an incredible 60 years on the throne. The Jubilee came in the same year as the 2012 London Olympic and Paralympic Games. A few years later, the Queen celebrated her 90th birthday with lots of events, including a service at St Paul's Cathedral and a giant street party with 10,000 guests. The monarch continued with her public duties and royal visits well into her 90s. The Queen encouraged the nation to keep going when the 2020 coronavirus pandemic hit the world. While we have faced challenges before, this one is different. This time we join with all nations across the globe in a common endeavour. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. Supporting her through her time as Queen was the Queen's husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. In April 2021, at the age of 99, Prince Philip died peacefully at home. The Duke of Edinburgh had been at the Queen's side since they married in 1947, and she often talked about how much she relied on his support. Following Prince Philip's death, the nation got one final chance to thank the Queen during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations in June this year. People from all across the UK and around the world witnessed a concert in front of Buckingham Palace, a pageant and even Paddington Bear meeting Her Majesty. You would like a marmalade sandwich? I always keep one for emergencies. So do I. I keep mine in here. Elizabeth II will be remembered as a queen who spent her life keeping the promise she made when she was first crowned to serve her people and her country. Queen Elizabeth II, who died today. We'll have more information on the Newsroom website and the Newsroom Bulletin will be back tomorrow. Attention all humans. The stunts you're about to witness have been performed by trained ooblies. Under no circumstances should children or silly adults attempt to do any of the actions you see in the program. It's time for ooglies. 